Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as we gather together, it is a, a really great day. It's great to see the, the Cooper bench filled. We are really happy to have all of you here, particularly in the We are so thankful uh, to God for you uh, and, and for the, your just shy of seven decades of dedicated service in all departments. And we are ecstatic that we can we can share this morning with you, uh, Dan and Starla. We are exceptionally happy to be bringing you in uh, in, in public reception of, of your membership this morning, and we are ecstatic about that as well. Uh, please stick around afterward for as long as you can for uh, <coughs> excuse me uh, for reception here in the in the parlor in Narthex, and, and we'll be enjoying that time together. Um, if you didn't happen to see or grab them, we have copies of the annual report to go for the annual meeting next week. We also have copies, uh, some copies of, of uh, Lenten study um, that, that are out there on the Narthex table. Um, in other announcements this morning, uh, the, the uh, Bible study, uh, Old Testament Bible study uh, tomorrow night at, at 7. Uh, choir practice as usual on Tuesday at 7.15. Wednesday evening we have Deacon's meeting. Uh, and then again next Sunday we, we have the, the annual meeting after worship. Um, <coughs> Sue, do you want to share real briefly uh, what you shared? in opening exercises in Sunday school, the number of classes that have now been collected. I am so excited. The people who were packing, we packed the drugs and the uh, donations we got. We got some wound care products that were donated and those are so valuable. But we have several churches who've collected glasses. We have over a thousand pairs. Oh my goodness. To take this Wonderful. time. So thanks to everybody for bringing in the glasses and make that <laughs> that's, that's definitely a praise God moment, and that, that is fantastic. That, that's about as exciting as it gets. And Bev Huber was going to try and come today because she didn't want to miss Nina's uh, reception, but um, she gave me three brand new canes. The, can and the PT was just, oh, they're still in the wrappers. So we had those plus crutches plus uh, plus walkers, and we're taking four wheelchairs. So. Excellent. Uh, other it, it, it's, are there other announcements? Because that's a great segue into yes. I don't need to take in the hall. There is a pink basket out on the table in the north X, and if you would like to write a Valentine for one of our shut-ins, like Dean or Jackie. Jackie's birthday happens to be on Valentine's Day. Or uh, Becky, or any of the veterans. Uh, there's some envelopes there, There's and we'll put them together, and I'm going to mail them tomorrow. So if you uh, want to do that, please take a card. You don't have to address it, because we'll put them in the envelopes to go. So any of our shut-ins can use a Valentine. Okay. Uh, any other announcements? Okay. Uh, in joys and concerns, uh, please do keep uh, Becky in prayer. Uh, she's up at St. Vincent Hospital in Erie. Uh, she has, thanks to the beginning with a, an asymptomatic UTI, she wound up developing this really, really nasty kidney infection. Uh, from the sounds from what they've been telling Bob, if he'd waited any longer getting her to the ER, uh, she probably would have gone septic. So it's, she, she's going to be needing some definite, uh, in addition to the IV, the IV antibiotics, she's going to need physical therapy as well once she's done, so it's, she, she's got a, a, a recovery road ahead of her here, so we keep, continue to keep her and you guys in prayer as, as you're having to do all you're having to. 
Uh, please keep Sue Nicoletto in prayer. Uh, Sue will be having abdominal surgery on the 28th. Uh, it, it's, you know, with the surgery she previously had years ago, this is stuff that has continued to accumulate and, you know, and various things going on and she's, she's having to have that done because she's been in a lot of pain. Um, please continue to keep uh, Jim Baker and Heather in prayer. Uh, Jim's developed a staph infection and he's uh, back in, in West Penn at the moment, which is probably the best place for him at the moment as they try to get that cleared up so that they get him back uh, on track and he, he doesn't lose any ground uh, with the upcoming uh, marrow transplant. Um, we are, as I said, ecstatic to be able to to thank God for nine as many, many years of labor and to welcome you to the, the membership of the publicly of, of, of this congregation. Um, see, what other ones might we have this morning? Sue. Jerry and Chris have a long day of travel coming back from Wisconsin. Aha, okay. Travel mercies for, for Jerry and Chris, okay. We, we, we'll, we'll definitely be keeping them in prayer. I have, I did it to Dubuque, but that's just a, a hair away from Wisconsin, and they're further in, in Wisconsin. I know the kind of drive they have, and it's a one day, that's lots of fun, so. Uh, others? Nancy. Um, my brother Bill is having three tests done this week um, to, to determine what they're going to do about his cancer. Um, he will have the oncologist visit the end of the month. Okay. Yeah, Bill and three to three upcoming tests. Uh, the oncologist at the end of the month. And you had one bit of good news that you also shared with Sunday School with that, that he did not have to get suctioned out this time and, and with his lungs, and that was a, a big plus. So, excellent. Others? Joyce. Tom Cooper has uh, eye injections oh, yes. tomorrow. Tom has his, his eye injection, next set of eye injection tomorrow. Um, Tom, every time I hear that, I... I, I I knew Bill Martin doing that for years. I've known you've been doing it for quite a while, but every time I hear that, it just makes me kind of go, I, I, can't, I can't stand to have people get near my eyes. Uh, yes, Jerry. Uh, Kyle called this morning. Uh, he had a package in the mailbox yesterday, and I guess he's been accepted at Peel in the master's program. Kyle being accepted at, at Peel? And you'd be able to do that for, for as well for the MBA program. So that is fantastic. Any more? All righty. Well, let us prepare to join together for worship as we listen to our prayer
As we join together, let us come together around our call to worship. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. The Lord is the devouring fire, and the mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. O oh Lord our God, as we come before you on this day, as we remember, <coughs> excuse me, as we remember your son's transfiguration, as we remember your glory shining effulgently, as we remember the ways in which you continue to call us to covenant faithfulness to yourself and that you empower us, that we can celebrate together, that we can be nourished by your word and by your, your sacrament, we crave your presence among us, that as we see you, we might see you in that fullness and effulgence as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, blessed now and forevermore. All this we ask in that name. Amen. Let us join to the, together in singing praise to the Lord the Almighty. Remake us and lead us by your spirit, 
the Comforter, and Advocate. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our merciful High Priest. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. Yet Christ died for us. He rose for us. He reigns in power for us, and he prays for us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that one is a new creation. The old life is past and gone, and a new life has begun. Let us give glory to God for the forgiveness we receive through his Son. friendly group, we always are, but on a day like today, it's all that much better to be able to share a sign of peace with each other and show that we actually do like each other, which is always great. Let us pray. Lord, in days of confusion, of the muddle that we see around us so often, of the competing voices, the noise, the static that plays in our ears all the time. We trust to you to provide us with a clear voice, a consistent signal, a clear clarion call that shines out in the midst of the darkness and that we might hear and trust and live into and believe. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. Our first lesson for this morning is taken from the second, uh, the, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the first six verses. 
Together, let us hear the word of God. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who were perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded their minds, it blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of, the, out of darkness, has light shone in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And our second lesson is taken from Mark's Gospel, from the ninth chapter. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one of what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Hey guys, uh, we got some pretty nifty stuff happening this morning. What what nifty things do you know that we we have going on this morning? Yeah, communion. That's definitely part of it. The Lord's Supper. Uh, we have. Do you like your teachers? You do. How important is it to you to have teachers? Pretty important. Why is that? Without teachers, you wouldn't be taught. Yes, that's absolutely the case. Now, how old are you? Eight. You're how old? Six. Okay. I know you see Nina every Sunday. Um, do you know how old mine is? <laughs> That's a lot older than eight or six. Uh, times and times and times that. But even as impressive as that is, what's really impressive is that that lady has been teaching Sunday school and Bible studies since she was only a few years older than you are now. And she has been teaching for one year shy of 70 years. And even then, as she retires from active teaching, she continues to teach by her life, by her example, and by her presence right here with us all the time. And that's huge. And you know what, it, it makes a difference because we have Dan and Starla coming in to be received into membership of the church this morning, and who are they sitting right behind? Tom and Nina, yeah. You know who <laughs> turns around and greets them every Sunday morning and has since they walked through the door? Tom and Nina. <laughs> that, that's a teaching moment too. 
And we have a lesson this morning on the, what's called the transfiguration. It means the big change. It means that God's glory sh shone on, on Jesus and that we have uh, Moses and Elijah, the two great prophets, wind up standing with Jesus. And that's another teaching moment for the disciples. That's one they're not supposed to talk about yet until after Jesus is resurrected, after, after he's crucified. But they saw it. It was a teaching moment. God speaks to us clearly. When everybody else, you, you ever have somebody who's just kind of gibbering? You know what I mean by that? You have every idea in the world what I just said, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. We hear gibbering around us all the time. It's like we can't get our thoughts out, and when we do, they're, oh, look, there's a squirrel. And we lose the point. But our eyes get focused back on Jesus, and we get the point back. And we see his light, and we see his glory. That's why we're here this morning. That's why we're here every Lord's Day morning. That's why he gave us the sacrament to nourish our souls, even as his word nourishes our minds. And in seeing each other together, we see just a little bit of a preview of the glory of God at work in us. I want you to be thinking about that, especially this whole week. Okay? Lord, we ask your blessing and your grace on us. Open our eyes and our hearts and our minds that we can see and receive your, and hear your word, that it might come to live in our hearts and come out in our lives of faith. We ask all this in your son's name.
How many of us remember the days of analog radio? Um, you still get a little bit of it, even with digital radio, from Pittsburgh State, some of the Pittsburgh stations up here, especially if you're passing under a transformer. But we don't have anything near like signal bleed through like we used to with the dial. We all remember the squeals, the static, the popping, the voices talking over each other. Uh, how often does that sound a lot like Fox, CNN, MSNBC, Newsmax, etc., etc., pick your favorite? You know, those great interview, pro interview programs with a panel, where by the end of it, Everybody's had something to say, usually on top of someone else, and by the time you're done, you figure you probably lost not just years from your life, but probably IQ points as well. And it's easy to get sucked in to that maelstrom, into that, that chaos. And as, as we hear that, it rings out to us in a particular way as we hear Paul's words to us. And yet, that is a great light that penetrates. And that's the point that Paul is making. As he is doing his part to explain, in part, the miracle of the transfiguration. Of the light becoming clear. There's a great old story some of you may have heard it. Uh, story coming out of a, a dark and stormy night at sea off the coast of New England, the rocky shore, one of the rocky coasts of New England, and it's an aircraft carrier that not quite sure, before GPS and not entirely certain how close to the, the shore they are, and the captain says, this is the captain of the USS whatever vessel before me and to my port side, move. This is an aircraft carrier. Get out of the way. And there is no response immediately. And that light just continues to shine out and there's another challenge. This is the captain of the USS whatever vessel ahead of me and to my port side. Get out of the way. We can't stop in time if you come up close to us because we're an aircraft carrier. To which the response comes back, USS whatever, this is the lighthouse back off. How often as we are in darkness and our eyes are veiled, do we miss things? Or we misperceive or misjudge what is clear or would be clear to us in front of us in light? Um, that can be really, really difficult and tricky. And that is in, in verse 3 of the 2 Corinthians passage, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. And in their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Even in our Christian lives, things can be veiled to us at times and seasons. They can be fuzzy or foggy. And we won't see everything clearly. Uh, there are a good number of us here with glasses. Uh, how many of you hate to wear your glasses when you're cooking 
particularly something like bacon. <laughs> Why? Because eventually you're going to see better with your glasses off than you're going to see with your glasses on because of the splashback coming out of the skillet. And that's when we do know what we're looking for and looking at. Those distractions are around us all the time. And they were present, very much present in the lives of the disciples. And as Jesus takes <coughs> Peter, James, and John up the mountain, they have this experience of the effulgent brightness and glory of God raining down upon them, and they see Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah, the representative greatest prophet, the two prophets of God who were taken bodily before death. And they appear with Jesus, and frankly, um, Peter, James, and John are more than a little freaked out. I mean, I, I, if I'm, uh, I'm going to see people who suddenly pop out of nowhere and they're shining really brightly, um, I, I think I'm going to be freaked out. And it says, Peter, uh, Peter, James, and John had no idea what to say or to do. They didn't know. And that's when Peter said, well, how about we build a couple of booths? How, how, basically, how about we put up a tent? that they can rest in and you guys can commune and, and, and do good, really cool prophet stuff. And Jesus isn't having that. But at the same time, what is it that they hear as a voice coming from heaven? This is my beloved son. Now, not the first time that we've heard that. At Jesus' baptism, we hear, hear those words. As the Holy Spirit descends on him in baptism, and we hear God say, This is my <coughs> beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. This time, there's an even more personal challenge. Having established that he is God's only son, and that God the Father is well pleased with him, he now says something that we need to reckon on even now. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. That can be downright tough. It is like listening to old analog radio with competing signals. You know, we, we used to have more discriminating ears. Um, Partly when we were younger, we could do that better. Um, now we have trouble enough hearing what's going on around us on regular days. Um, but we had more practice listening to and clearing out that static. You have to selectively listen. You have to pick and you have to focus. It's not just hearing. We are to hear, yes, but we are to actively listen to what it is he says, to what it is he puts out there for us. And it is in that way that the light shines out of darkness. It is in that way that we continue to be nourished and made new and made full. As we look at that, as we prepare to <coughs> welcome Dan and Scarlett, as they respond in faith to this call and these words, as we honor and are thankful to God for Nina's life and her service, we listen and we acknowledge and we pray for Christ's light to shine out of the darkness and illumine us to bright and effulgent daylight. Let us cling to him. Amen. Dan and Scarlett, I feel like uh, Bob Barker's sidekick. Come on down. <laughs> Deanna and 
and Starla Lindy have been received into the membership of this congregation by affirmation of faith in Jesus Christ. We welcome Friends, as members of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, you do not come to us as strangers, but as brothers and sisters in the Lord. We welcome you to the worship and work of the, this people of God. There is one body and one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Do you promise to be a faithful member of this congregation, giving yourselves in every way and so fulfill your calling as a disciple of Jesus Christ the Lord, do you? <coughs> as you are joined with us, we are thankful for that and we pray. Oh God, our Father, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing to add to our number uh, this brother and sister in faith. Together may we live in your spirit and so love one another that we may have the mind of Christ Jesus our Lord to whom we give honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And everybody else will get to share the right hand of fellowship with you after we worship and we go out, out there and join in, in the, the, the eating of good nashes and, the, and fellowship. But in the meantime, we extend to you the right hand of fellowship in Christ Jesus. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you guys are done. <laughs> Mina, come on down. <clears throat> <laughs> so this morning, I'd like to recognize Nina for all her years of dedication and service. Not only she did uh, 69 years of uh, Sunday school, correct me if I'm wrong here, she also did 40 years of Mother's Guild, right? Yep. And uh, I think you said 14 years of... Uh, I started teaching at 14. Yeah. <laughs> and 14 years of uh, Christian Endeavor, correct? So uh, lots of teaching experience right here. So Nina, on uh, behalf of the entire congregation, I'd like to present you this uh, small token of our appreciation and all your years of dedication for 69 years. Thank you. <laughs> bring, this, bring this to the out front so everybody can see it. Okay. <laughs> Nina, we do give thanks to God for you today. Uh, and I'm, I'm thankful, I, I'm glad John said what he said, but I gotta say one of the, other than the search committee, the session, one of the first people to get in touch with me and welcome me and make me feel welcome when we got here was Nina Cooper. And I get regular phone calls and text messages from Nina. Nina, I'm impressed regularly with your texting abilities because I think they exceed my own. <laughs> Not that that's necessarily difficult, but I'm, I'm, I'm really, it, it, it's, it's phenomenal. As we prepare to join together around the Lord's table, let us join in singing verses one and two of Holy, Holy, Holy. <laughs>
friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Let us lift up our hearts before the Lord. Let us give thanks to God, for he is good. His love is from everlasting to everlasting. Let us lift up our hearts to the Lord and give thanks to him, because it is right to give him thanks and praise. Holy Lord, Father Almighty, everlasting God, we thank you for commanding light out of darkness, for dividing the waters into sea and dry land, for creating the whole world and calling it good. We thank you for making us in your image to live with each other in love, for the breath of life, the gift of speech, the freedom to choose your way. You have told us your purpose in, in commandments to Moses and called for justice in the cry of the prophets. Through long generations you have been fair and kind to all your children. Great and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Your ways are just and true. Holy Father, we thank you for your son Jesus, who lived with us sharing joy and sorrow, who told your story, who healed the sick, who was a friend to sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and was murdered by those whom he loved. We praise you that he is not dead, but is risen to rule the world and is still the friend of sinners. We trust him to overcome every power to hurt or divide, so that when you bring us into your promised kingdom, we will celebrate victory with him. Remembering the Lord Jesus, we break bread and share the cup, announcing his death for the sins of the world and telling of his resurrection to all people. Lord God, give us your Holy Spirit in the breaking of bread so that we may be drawn together and joined to Christ the Lord, receiving new life, that we may remain his glad and faithful people until we feast with him in glory. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and he broke it. And after having given thanks, he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the remission of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim again the Lord's death until he comes.
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. The body of our Lord which is broken for you, take and eat. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Cut off from me, and you can do nothing. Yet abide in me, and you will bear much fruit. cup of the Lord's blood shed for the remission of sins, take and drink.
ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. You know what I said about cooking bacon and, and wearing glasses? Perspiration will do it to you, too. And because of that, uh, one of the thanksgivings I have, and I was glaring out at the world through funky colored glasses, that, or funkified glasses at that point, Terry, it is great to see you sitting in your pew and to be back amongst us. I know you've been upright and walking in the land of the living, but we are really, really glad to see you back in worship. Let us bring, uh, let it, yeah, that. Let us join together in, an, in a time of prayer before the Lord. Almighty God, as you do break into our darkness, as we see you afresh through your word, through the walking, living testimony of the pages of the lives of your saints, in this body as we are joined together and made stronger as we receive new members. As we hear your voice from your word this morning, as we share it together <coughs> in fellowship around your table that nourishes our souls. Lord, we ask that you would speak loudly and clearly in the world around us by your word with our voices and with our hands. That you would speak it to those who are in authority over us in the church and in the world. That we would continually speak it to each other. That we would encourage each other and challenge each other that we would continue to serve with each other, arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder. That we might continually build each other up and bear each other's burdens in love. Lord, in a particular way, we come before you with the joys and the thanks and the confessions and the petitions of this body. Those that we have mentioned, those that we know, those that we share deeply in our hearts and minds together as we pray individually and in groups as, as we are joined together this very morning. Lord, we put our list before you and we put, importantly, those known but to you alone. <coughs> we speak to you with a passion, a love, and a joy, and a concern. We come before you often as those who don't have clear and articulate words, and yet we trust that your spirit does intercede with groans too deep for words when we don't know what to, to say. But as we do so, we make bold to come before you. Praying as your Son has taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us come before the Lord, bringing our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings in joyful thanks for what he has freely given to us by his love and his grace.
Lord our God, in our gratitude, our thanksgiving, for who you are, for what you have done with, in, and for us, by your Son's completed work, by the continued presence and power of your Holy Spirit raining down upon and within us. We present these, the offerings of our hands. We present our own selves as living offering of thanks and praise. Lord, we ask that you would bless these offerings and we ourselves, that you would multiply them and us, that you would make us to continue to work your world, in your world, and proclaim your good news here and around that world until your Son returns again in glory. All this we ask in his name. together in singing God of grace and God of glory.